Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this talk on testing production. I'm going to tell you stories about testing in production and yeah, at the end we're going to talk about telepresence, uh, a tool that allows you to basically test in production on your Kubernetes cluster. So let's get into it. I'm going to talk about telepresence. I'm going to introduce telepresence, but first I'm going to talk about why should we use telepresence and uh, what are the use cases. So telepresence comes at the very last. This talk is going to be useful for all the developers, I would say, and uh, DevOps people basically trying to make life easier for the developers. And why it's important because then it will make the feedback loop when you're using Kubernetes, it will make the feedback loop faster than when you're writing code, deploying it and waiting for deployment to finish and then test it. It will basically remove these deployment parts that you have to commit your code, you have to wait for the Docker build to be built. And uh, by taking those parts away, you, you have faster feedback uh, on your code and, and you can work faster, basically. So I'm going to talk about testing production. First, a staging environment and telepresence at the end. This is me, uh, Mohammed Ali Arabi. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Yodel. I'm going to leave Yodel at the end of February. So when you're watching this video, it might not be very correct. Uh, I'm a Docker captain as well, uh, meaning that I'm creating content about Docker, basically writing blogs, doing conference talks and things like that. And I'm in Freiburg currently, which is a German city and, and Yodel, our office is in Berlin. So that's a bit far. I, I can demonstrate basically how far that is. So let's open up Google Maps. This is Freiburg where I live. And I'm pretty much 10, 15 minutes away from France, 16 kilometers. This is Rhine and in our area, this is designating the border of France and Germany. And I'm like 50 kilometers away from Switzerland, which is like 40 minutes drive. So I'm in the corner here and Berlin is actually too far away. It's 60, 650 kilometers. And I live here and I work there. So I have a telepresence in Berlin, basically, because all my colleagues, most of my colleagues are in Berlin and I'm present there through video calls and everything. And yeah, also it's interesting that a lot of European cities are closer than Berlin. So if you're anywhere in Switzerland, it's half the distance. Paris is even closer and, and Amsterdam. So people call me usually saying that, okay, we are coming to Berlin. We are coming to this conference. Maybe we could meet up. So if you, because I'm also in Germany, but yeah. So if, if you're in Milan or Switzerland, then it would be easier to meet up. So next time you're in any of these cities, you can write me a message on Twitter. So that, that's about working remotely. So uh, these are my handles. If you want to write me to meet up, uh, basically I, this is my last name on GitHub, Medium, LinkedIn, Telegram, everywhere basically. And on Twitter, I am Mohammed Ali En basically because that's my English speaking uh, Twitter account. I have 
to others in different languages, one in German as well with zero followers. And I sometimes just in production. So back in the day, the year was 2015 and I was working up there in the tower. Uh, I, I show up this place because that's the last nice office I had. And once one of my colleagues pushed the code to production and back in the day, we didn't have Kubernetes. We had 12 servers and yeah, so you can see one of the servers on the desk of this colleague of mine. And we would basically SSH into each one of these servers and deploy the code. So the procedure was that we would merge our code into master. And we had a script that would automatically SSH into all of these servers and then get the latest version of master. And because it was Python, then that was enough. And once my colleague basically updated master with the code that he uh, wrote and after deployment, all the 12 servers went down. Yeah, I've, we, we said, okay, the website is down. Please take a look at what you did. And he said, yeah, I, I missed a colon in my code. This is basically one thing that we should not do. Basically, I was like, okay, I, we have CI CD pipelines. Maybe you should create feature branches first and allow these CI CD pipelines to check your code. And then after everything's fine, then you can merge your code into master. That being said, uh, the CI CD pipelines don't always get everything that is wrong with your code. But yeah, so don't test in prod. If you can test somewhere else, then it's better not to test in production. And uh, how can we not test in production? So the solution to that would be a staging environment. And uh, we can create a replica of the production environment and first merge or deploy our code into this environment and then we can manually test stuff. And yeah, so this is uh, what we were doing when I was in Amsterdam back in 2018. So we, it was a lovely summer day as, as depicted in the picture. And yeah, I, I was working on a feature and we were using Java, so there was no native support for MongoDB queries that were in JavaScript. And we had to write them into strings and pass them along to MongoDB and, and wait for it to parse them. So I updated one of these functions that was doing something with MongoDB. And then the procedure was that I would create a PR, people would review it, then everything if everything was fine, all the test cases were green, we would merge it into the development branch. And then this development branch would be merged in or deployed into this staging environment that we had. That happened, the code went through, uh, the review was fine. And then after deployment, uh, it broke the staging environment. Again, I missed the colon in the string, but because it was a string to the code, uh, the compiler didn't uh, complain about it. Yeah, so at least it wasn't in the production code, so I could only break the sta staging environment because we had a staging environment. And then people came back to me saying, yeah, so you have to change your code and create another PR. That's what I did. And this is how the procedure worked. Write the code, create PR, merge it to staging, and then the QA would pick all these tickets up, test them, and if everything was fine, then deploy them to the ship them to production. 
it's a lot better than not having a staging environment. But the issue with it is that if we have only one staging environment and everyone basically deploys their stuff into this one staging environment, it could prolong the feedback process. And like in my case, I had to wait for the QA to pick it up and I had to create another PR and let it be reviewed again and then deploy it again. And it could happen that, yeah, I'm working on something. I merge it after two weeks into this staging environment. The QA picks it up in four weeks, basically. And after four weeks, uh, I don't remember what I did. And then if the QA has some queries about this feature, then it might take longer for me to remember what I did back in the days and yeah, basically fix it. We are halfway through our talk, so bear with me. So what is the solution? To find out, we have to go to yet another company and it's 2022 and I'm working in Berlin remotely. And yes, yeah, so these are my colleagues, uh, happy and sunny, but it's not Berlin, of course, because it's sunny. And this is how the procedure works. We code. We commit it, we push it to the feature branch, basically. The CI pipeline picks it up, it starts building the Docker image, and then after the Docker image is built, we can then manually deploy the code to one of the personal staging environments that we have. So. In there, we have five replicas of the production environment. And when we want to test something on our, our PR, on our uh, feature branch, we can deploy that version of the code to one of these staging environments. And before basically merging this PR, we can test it manually. And after everything's fine, then we can ask someone else to review the code. That is super nice, but this is the cycle. So every time I find a new bug, then I have to go through all of these stages again. I have to code again, commit it, push it, wait for the CI to build it. It might take 10 minutes or Project is not that big, but it could be even more time for other projects. And then we have to deploy it. We do it manually, but even if it's automatic, then it could be two more minutes and then testing it manually. It's that that's the good part because we are learning something from it, but then we have to go through all these stages every time. This is a killer process, so it's, it's nice, but it might kill your productivity. So how can we shorten this path and basically make a shortcut there? That's the promise of telepresence, basically. So the promise is that you write your code and you can automatically test it without committing it, without pushing it and without CI building your Docker image and deploying it. So how does it work? You write your code and you run it on your local machine with Docker Compose, for example. And you have a deployment you have a service on your staging environment and telepresence is basically there and it redirects all these incoming requests to this one service that you're testing and redirects them to your local machine. So basically when you change something in your local machine, it is as it's already deployed on the Kubernetes cluster and Basically, you're mocking the service on this remote cluster. And 
it's basically like me working from Freiburg in Berlin. I am here, but I have these telepresence in the other cluster. So how does it work? There is a global interception mode, which basically redirects all the requests to one service in your Kubernetes cluster. You can also have a personal interception mode that only redirects the requests that have certain headers set for them. Uh, so you can basically, if you're uh, using a cluster with like a staging environment with multiple people, then all of them can have this interception enabled, but with different requests, the requests are redirected to different machines. So they can all use the same staging environment for testing. Telepresence is open source, so you, you should not be worried about losing it in the future. And it has a Docker, a Docker desktop extension. So, so yeah, so if you like clicking on stuff, then you can use that one. I have written a blog post on how to basically set it up, how to use it, the, the technical part of it. And yeah, because that's usually the easy stuff, I didn't include them into my today's talk. But we can look into the blog post together. So this is my blog, arabi.medium.com. And if you enter, you can see this is the first one. It's not big enough. Let's make it bigger. Yeah. And then this is the first one because I pinned it. If you open it, make it big again. Then you can see that it has instructions on how to configure uh, local setup, configure Kubernetes cluster, how to install telepresence on it. And yeah, so how to test how the whole thing works. I skipped it because that's usually not very interesting uh, technical part. Yeah, after using telepresence, then you become a happy company and then you can go on offsites. Uh, at the end, a staging environment is something that makes your deployment uh, more safe. So you, you test your code in a staging environment before testing it in production, basically. Uh, that being said, you can basically test in production with telepresence because we have this personal interception mode. Sometimes you really need to test in production because you want to debug something or you want to find something that is not reproduced, reproducible in the staging environment and you really want to look into stuff on your production code and you can basically use this personal interception mode. And for example, if you have a replica of 10 services, you can basically enable telepresence for one of these and then uh, redirect some of the requests back to your machine and look into them. But generally telepresence makes feedback loop shorter for your testing on Kubernetes. And that's something that we basically lost with the, with the introduction of uh, microservices, because back in the day when everything was in one place, we could run everything on our machine because that was easy. And we could test everything locally and then it was fast because we could debug stuff and, and we don't, we didn't have to wait for the CSD pipelines to build the Docker images. But now we 
microservices, usually it's not easy to do that on your local machine, on your uh, development environment, because it's too complicated. Every single service is dependent upon many other services, and that's something that is not easily achievable. But with telepresence, basically, you can mock just one service, and you can run this one service that you want to test or develop on, and you can run it on your local machine, which is way easier than running the whole thing. And then you can basically use this interception mode and get the real requests into your local machine and, and then debug and get the feedback and test manually, basically. That's the conclusion. And thanks a lot. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me through the links that I shown this earlier. And the slides for this talk will be available on my GitHub repo talks and, and yeah, like all, all, all my other talks. I will also publish a link to the video after it's published on YouTube. So yes, have a nice rest of the day.